Hello everyone, welcome to this Bite Size PD. The topic for this specific PD is using Canvas to assign peer reviews. So to connect this to our MTSS framework, I connect this to the feedback cycle under the instructional priorities. Uh, the reason for that is because one of the purposes of peer reviews or the purpose of peer reviews is an opportunity for students to give feedback to their peers as well as receive feedback from their peers. And so I think it's a great opportunity that they're getting feedback, not just from the teacher, but from other students in their class. So the learning intention for this session is I'm learning how I can use Canvas to create and assign peer review assignments. And then you will know you're successful when you can create and assign a peer review assignment in Canvas and then locate resources to support your learning. So here's a quick rundown of the agenda for this session. I'll start with what the peer review feature is in Canvas and how you can use it. Um, how you, I'll show you how you can create and assign a peer review assignment. I'll also show you how you can do this for intra-group peer reviews. Um, I'll show you what it looks like for the student experience and their view. And then um, how you can see the, stu the student peer review comments as an instructor. And then I'll end with some resources that can support you as you move forward. So the peer review feature in Canvas, it's just a feature that's part of a regular Canvas assignment. Uh, it's, and I'll show you in a moment where you can go in, it's just a box you can check that will enable this for your students. It allows your students to provide feedback on other students' assignments. Um, it can be completed anonymously, meaning you can assign it where students don't know who's reviewing whose uh, submissions. And it can also be something that's done um, between sections. So if you're a teacher whose Canvas course has, is cross-listed, meaning it's combined multiple sections together, you can actually have students not in the same class reviewing other people's or reviewing other people's submissions. I'm hoping that made sense. So it doesn't have to be the same students in the same class, but they do have to be within the same Canvas course. So cross-listed courses will work. And then something you can also use is rubrics to support the peer review process. And this also ensures a consistent review criteria. One thing that if you want to do peer reviews with your students, this is definitely a skill and a routine that you want to teach and make sure you set up your expectations and utilizing rubrics can really support that. You don't wanna go into the peer review um, opportunity assuming the kids will know what to do and do it correctly the first time or even the second time. So it's definitely something you want to be explicit about. And I think the rubrics can definitely help when they're reviewing someone else's submission, um, what they're looking for, and then also supporting them in providing feedback. Uh, something else you can even do is provide some sentence frames. So if they're recognizing maybe something is a little bit of improvement, maybe supporting them and how they can say that in a way that doesn't um, come across abrasive or um, neg in a negative manner to the fellow students. So. so when creating and assigning a peer review assignment, uh, you're creating a Canvas assignment just like you normally do. So this is a Canvas assignment, not a quiz, not a discussion, a Canvas assignment. Uh, you add your assignment details, you select the submission type. Uh, for this, text entry, a website URL, or even um, file upload, that's the example I'm gonna show you. Uh, unfortunately, the external tool option, and that's kind of what my face is hiding right now, this means like the Google LTI or the Nearpod LTI, those do not support peer reviews. So if you're a teacher who utilizes the Google LTI and you're wanting to do a peer review assignment, just make sure you don't select the external tool option. Maybe you do the file upload and you show your students how in Google they can do a download of their, um, their assignment or their submission uh, for whatever they're gonna submit. Um, the main thing with this is when you're going through creating your assignment, you'll see when you're going through your list of options in the settings, the assignment settings, there'll be a box that says require peer reviews. Initially, you just see the first little bit. Once you check it, the rest of it expands, and then you can decide if it's manually or automatic. So let me just jump out and show you what it looks like to do this as a teacher. So I'm in my Canvas course. I'm actually in my module section. You'll see where I started a peer review assignment. So once again, you create the assignment just like you normally do. And when you're editing, you give it the name, you add whatever details and instructions you want. 
And I always go just from top to bottom and do my points, my group, um, how I want the grade displayed. This is where you want to make sure it's online. This is where external tool won't work uh, or it's not supported. So I just uh, selected text entry and file uploads. And then you can identify the temps. You can still enable the plagiarism review if you'd like. Um, I'll talk about the group assignment in just a moment because there is a way to do to provide or assign peer reviews within groups. Uh, this is where, if I didn't have this checked initially, once I click on require peer reviews, this is where you can see it's manually assigned or automatic. I'm going to stick with manually so I can show you how to manually do it. And then I like checking the box to have the reviews appear anonymously. But as a teacher, you can decide what works best for you and your group of students. And then you adjust your due date and the availability. So I'm going to hit save because I'm not done yet. I didn't say automatic. I need, I need to manually assign my peer reviews. So here's my assignment details. If I go to the right hand side, you'll see where I now see the option for peer reviews. This is where I can click on this and I see a list of all of my students. So it is showing me all students. I can search by reviewer or search by peer review. Just so you know, I have Suzy Campus and Camco. They're in one section of my of, and, and in my Canvas course. Johnny's in another. This means this might be period one. Johnny's in period two. So this just shows you how it's showing all of my students. If I have a Canvas course that's cross-listed with multiple sections, so this might be where if you want to manually make sure or assign reviews, like maybe you only want people in your period one to review other period one students, you may have to go manually do it. But if you like the idea that students can be assigned to anyone, off to the right hand side, if you change your mind where you want to automatically set, I could say I want one review per user um, assigned peer reviews. So you could actually have students review two or three um, different people's work if you want. And maybe when you're starting this, you just start with one. Um, I'm going to show you how you can manually do it. So if I want Johnny to review Camco, I just select Camco and click Add. Susie, I'll say she's going to review Johnny. And then I have Camco, she's going to assign Susie. And so now if I go back to my assignment, I can see my peer reviews. And that's all you have to do. And oh, you'll see where I can still add my rubric. I still think the rubric's a great option. Maybe I'll add a rubric just so you can see. And the rubric I'm about to add is not going to be something that you would actually want to use. Um, I'd be a lot more explicit. So I'm just going to pick a random rubric just so you can see what it looks like to be added. OK, so going back to this presentation, that's how you assign a peer review. So I did mention that there's a way to do it with groups. So if you are a teacher who likes to do group assignments and maybe you have a group of like six kids and you want those six students to review each other's work. You don't want it to be out of the group. Um, this will walk you through the steps. It's very similar to what we just did. I actually skipped over it. When I'm in my assignment settings, where it says group assignment, if you check this box, and actually I'm showing that it's not letting me do it because I've already ass assigned this. Notice how I got the message. Students have already submitted work, so it's not. I'm not able to go back and adjust it. So I'm actually going to cancel out of this and just create a quick new assignment to show you what that looks like. So I'm just going to do a new assignment. This is a good way for me to show you the process again. Um, I go into the editing screen. Once again, here are my directions. I'll give it points, submission, make sure it's online, the external won't be supported. And so where it says this is a group assignment, and this is where, if you're someone who does groups, you'll know what I'm talking about. If this interests you, um, I think I have another PD somewhere about how to use groups in Canvas, but you do. it does require that you have a group, uh, group set up. You can allow students to sign up. I'm going to split them into, I think I only have one group, so I'll just, because uh, see where I can split students by number of groups or students per group. Um, I'm just going to hit save. So 
it's taking a minute. Essentially, what I'm hoping that you'll see is now when I require my peer reviews, let me go back to my directions to make sure it says allow intergroup peer reviews. So I should now see, and it might be, let me make sure. I'm going to pause this for a second. It was in front of my face. I didn't see it. So right here, it says allow intergroup peer reviews. So that's the box I need to check. And I'm going to, if I do automatically one review per user, um, this will then assign the groups within, like the peer reviews within the students who are in the groups. So that's just, and I'm not going too deep into how to do the groups in Canvas. That's a different conversation. So just know if you're a teacher who does group assignments, you like the idea of students being able to review each others within the group, that's where the allow intergroup reviews would, would take place. So what does the student experience look like? So I actually have this video that's linked and it starts about the 15 second mark to 150 mark. It'll actually show you the student experience. Um, but I also am going to show you live. So I'm going to go into a student. I think it's this one. So I'm logged in as Camco. And when I go to her module, here's the peer review assignment, but I also can see required peer review. So the peer review assignment is where I would go to submit. And you actually see there's the rubric that I'm going to be graded on. Um, I also can access the required peer review and this was anonymous. So I'm not seeing who I have to announce. So she doesn't know that she's assigned to Susie campus. When I click on, oh, I thought she was, oh, this was new to me. I didn't realize students must submit their own work before they can review their peers. So let's go back and I'm going to submit. We'll just do a quick text box entry. And I'm going to hit next. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to hit submit. I might have to retype that. Nope, I don't. So I'm gonna submit my assignment. Okay, so that was something new to me. I didn't realize you do have to submit before you can peer review. So now I can do my peer review. And this is where, if I scroll down, I can see the submission for the person I'm reviewing. So I can read through this and I should be able to, so you'll see where as the peer reviewer, I can actually click on the, this is where as a teacher, if you're having students review, having a rubric for them to use to provide feedback can be helpful. And this is where I can actually leave feedback. And as a teacher, you wanna make sure students know how to access the rubric and review the feedback that might be given. Um, I always like telling people if you're gonna leave something less than like full points, you wanna leave comments so people know why they were marked down a point or two. And so, and I know I'm scrolling really fast. I'm gonna hit submit. So I've completed my peer review. So now if I click on peer review, it did tell me I completed. I'm going to log out of um, Camco and log in as Susie Campus so you can see what it looks like for her. So if I go to, it was in this class, I do see I have grades. If I go to my peer review assignment, My grader was anonymous. Oops, I want to view the rubric. And if I scroll down and I can see what I was marked on, and you'll notice the comments are underneath 
So as the reviewer, I was leaving comments off to the right-hand side. For the person who receives the comments, it's below the ratings. So there are mine, and I can see my submission. And then notice how my required peer reviews for, not mine, Susie's. I can do the anonymous. Oh, she had Johnny Campus. That's why I'm not seeing it. But anyway, that gives you a quick look of what it looks like for students. If you want a better, <laughs> a better demonstration than what I just did, let me show you what this video will look like. And I said, starting at the 15 minute mark, oh, I'm gonna make sure the video goes to the actual video because it's the feedback overview. And it starts at 15. Yeah. So this is an example of what it would look like if you didn't do anonymous. Um, this is showing you each student's name. So it gives you an idea of what that looks like. So maybe the first time you do this, be prepared for maybe a little bit, bump, a little bit of bumps. It's not too, too bumpy, but it is the first time students do this. It'll feel a little weird just because it's a new process. But you can definitely watch this video, show it to students. This video was actually made for students to support them when it comes to um, doing the peer reviews and getting the feedback. And then as the teacher, I'm going to show you how you can see the peer reviews. So this is where when I go back to my teacher course into that peer review assignment, once again, I see peer reviews here. If I click on peer reviews, this is where I could see there's a check mark to lets me know that this was given, like the feedback was given. And I can actually look at the peer review, view feedback. I should be able to look at the rubric. Let's show the rubric. Yep, and I can look at the rubric because that's how this person gave the comments. And you'll notice as the teacher, it opens up and I can keep it as how the person reviewed it, or I can even adjust the score if I want. So it just gives you a glimpse of what it looks like on the, on the teacher's end, um, but definitely don't be afraid to explore and try some things out and works best for you. And then the last thing I have on here is just some available resources. Canvas has some really great Canvas guides to support teachers. And I'll even provide the link for the, the videos for students, but there's even Canvas guides that are videos. But these links specifically um, go to how do I use a peer review? They're made for the teacher. They have great screenshots, can give you a really good idea of the different steps of the process. And don't be afraid to utilize them because they really do break them down. And there's a quick way to maybe um, or like anchor links where you want to go to, maybe you, you want to go specifically to the peer review guide or peer view peer review grades. So you can quickly go to a different section. So if I, if I go back to my presentation, if I can, let's see where my presentation is. There we go. So another one is um, how do I view student peer review? So just you'll see where some great resources to utilize as a teacher to support you in your process. So thank you for watching this Bite Size PD. As a reminder, we do have our website that has other Bite Size PDs that you can watch. And if you want relicensure credit, fill out this relicensure credit form. Um, we award the credit on Midas and it's about Usually at the end of the month is when we get it, we get it awarded, but it's relicensure credit. You get one credit or no 0.5 credit for every bite sized PD that you watch. And as always, if you have any questions about what you just saw, or you want to learn more about even Canvas groups, uh, utilizing this feature a little bit more with your students, don't hesitate to reach out to me. My name is Camille Cole and you, my email is camille.cole at canyonsdistrict.org. I hope you have a great day and I'm excited to see what you all do with peer reviews in Canvas.